This is probably the most incomparable bus I've ever driven. I mean about the buses of the USSR. But with such a vehicle? Just imagine 1991 luxury. The bus is unique. Yes, it is a government vehicle, but it was created not by order of the Soviet party, like everything else in our country, but at the initiative of the workers of the Likachev plant, and it happened in the early 60s. The workers of the plant, the chief designer of the Design Bureau of Passenger Cars, Rodionov, and the young artist Sabo, in their free time with their comrades and with the team, designed this bus. The main requirement was that the car had to be built on the components and assemblies of an existing car, in this case, the Zeal 111. The management of the plant and the party liked what they developed, but there was no money for mass production. The plant produced trucks and limousines, and buses began to be made in small batches and on order. And the customers were the Motor Depot of the Central Committee of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union and the Ministry of Health. That was the bus, Zeal 118 Youth. And so, we continue the cycle of stories about the unique cars of the first people of the state. Today, Zeal 3207 Youth. This is the latest upgraded version of this bus. I must say that there are no two identical youths. Somehow they're all different, but they have the same concept. A body and a carriage layout on a standard Zeal frame. Government vehicles were modernized, so the youth also changed. But the main thing was that the body was load-bearing. Of course, the frame is present. But it is impossible to separate it from the body, it's integrated. Heavy-duty welded structure with cross members on which the body panels are welded. But by distributing the weight of the body over the frame, the creators managed to reduce the weight of the car by 300 to 400 kilograms. Such a massive foundation made it possible to create a very light-looking car. Look at the glazing. Meanwhile, the length of the car is almost 7 meters. New time, new design. Rockets and fins are no longer in fashion. They were replaced by straight lines and flat panels. The artist of the updated car was Boris Kuznetsov. Zeal is stylistically designed perfectly. Parallel lines, a radiator grille, twin headlights, a small hood. For the sake of streamlining, the front turn signals are recessed into the fenders, but are clearly visible from behind the passing cars. In the youth, passengers use the side door, and in old age, the back. The car could easily be used as an ambulance, or like most cars in the USSR, it could become a military vehicle in an instant. Now that is a jack, I can tell you, comrades. The doorway is 90 centimeters. The height of the step is 40, very convenient. You come in and bend down a little, but not much. Wide aisle of 17, soft seats, heater, not bad. Yeah. 
As well as the distance between the seats, obviously they did not try to save on space, did not try to cram as many people in as possible. And again, the amount of light in the cabin is striking. The finish matches, velour, carpets. From above, massive air ducts are also hidden under the trim. Lighting is arranged along the entire interior on both sides. Yes, living well isn't against the law. Each passenger has its own air vents. There is a call button to the driver, if you will, suddenly need to get out. Always in the youths, there was problems with supplying ventilation. And there was a big problem with air conditioning, because sometimes it was not possible to put a huge box weighing 150 kilograms onto the cabin. Therefore, in each youth, they always made four rather big ventilation hatches. This hump is where the engine is hidden. Access to the engine from the outside is also possible. The driver has his own entrance. I cannot say there is a lot of space, but enough. I repeat once again, there are no identical youths, but with all, there was an automatic transmission in the car with a transmission shifter. Let me remind you that the Zeal 111, the predecessor of the youth, had buttons. About the dashboard, well, everything is clear. Buttons, the interior lighting can be switched on and separately, also the inclusion of the heater. The driver has his own button separately, and also a button for switching tanks. There are two tanks on the left and on the right. The steering column is not adjustable. There is a foot brake and a hand release. Initially, the engines were from the Zeal 130, namely from a truck. Why? So that in the future, the car could be used not only by government services, but also by ordinary vehicle services. The engine in this car is a Zeal 509, aka the Zeal 375. It is a V8 engine, volume is 7 liters, and the power is 180 horsepower. An interesting fact about the engine, such motors are installed on Euro trucks, and earlier they were installed on Laz buses. This means they can run on 76 gasoline. Interestingly, the engine itself is on a cross member. The subframe is bolted to the body via rubber shock absorbers. By the way, the front suspension from the armored limousine, Zeal 4105, is also mounted on the cross member. How much does the Laz bus weigh? About 10 tons. The youth? About 5 tons, so 7 liters are appropriate here. It accelerates quickly. In addition, all the civilized benefits are here. I spoke about the automatic transmission. I didn't mention that it is not 2-speed, but 3-speed. The gears shift hard, with soft kicks showing how far the world auto industry has gone today, and hinting that our domestic auto industry had turned in the wrong direction, not allowing a great car to go into mass production. Power steering. Turning requires more than one finger, but that's fine. Did you see that there are four pedals? About one I mentioned, it's a handbrake, but there are two brake pedals. What is it for? Today we are all accustomed to the automatic transmission, but a simple Soviet driver? The automatic transmission, well, may not have been seen before. Therefore, he could brake with the foot that was more convenient for him. Two tanks of 160 liters each allowed the bus to travel more than half a thousand kilometers without refueling. The maximum speed by today's standards is not great, 120 kilometers per hour. But keep in mind, this is not a regular bus and not a minibus. This is a sedate transport for vacationers in a sanatorium or by a group of security guards going on a business trip. I realize that in the youth, I am not sitting behind the engine, not above the engine, but in front of the engine. So I have to turn a little later.
The brakes here are also from Zeal. Front ventilated discs, double piston with a floating caliper. The tires, by the way, are also strong. Again, from an armored car with a vulcanizing gel, gel that seals the holes in the tires. Springs. Interesting thing. It is clear they are no better than pneumatic, but the springs are more stiff. I'll go and feel them in the back seat. No, the springs do not jump and neither do I, and I don't want to. And I feel bad that this car, invented for the people, never reached the people. For 34 years of production, less than 100 buses were produced. The government did not have the money for the car, which won recognition in Paris as the 18th International Bus Week in 1967. The younger Ford, seeing the bus, bought one himself and wanted to produce them under license. After all, no one before us did such buses and it was a mini-revolution. Today, the youth buses are almost all still on the road. They are in good condition, in private collections. The youth could have been a legend of our mechanical engineering. If only, if only. But life goes on and the work continues.